On the night of September the 9th of 2020, Wisconsin woman Arianika Primer was out celebrating her 27th birthday at a club in northern Milwaukee. At some point during the night, she got into an argument with a group of women. Primer then went outside at around 1.30 a.m. and she was shot. The emergency services were called to the scene, but Primer was beyond saving and she was pronounced dead. Her family subsequently arrived at the club. The victim's older sister, Siobhan Oliphant, later told the media that the authorities didn't immediately have answers for them. Distraught Oliphant stated, My sister should be here. She should have never died on her birthday. The police arrested a 36-year-old man at the scene, but his identity and his connection to the shooting remained unspecified. Primer was survived by two young sons. Number 6. Sean Crossfield Leading up to the summer of 2022, Englishman Sean Crossfield had recently returned to paragliding after a six-year break. In August, 54-year-old Crossfield was flying with a group from Leeds near Tong Garden Centre from a field that a local farmer had given them permission to use. Crossfield was flying alongside another pilot who'd landed safely. The companion then saw Crossfield approaching the field, but as the wind suddenly changed direction, he went into a spiral and disappeared behind the tree line. Crossfield was the only one in the air at the time. Witnesses reported that he performed a maneuver that caused the lines of his wing to become tangled. He was flying low while presumably coming in to land and didn't have time to deploy his parachute. One of his companions subsequently told the media, I looked back and saw him drop like a stone. The man was fatally injured in the fall. Friends described Crossfield as a born-again paragliding enthusiast who'd started flying 15 years prior and had gotten back into the sport for about a year. The police didn't find any suspicious circumstances at the scene and the weather conditions were reported as ideal for flying. The working hypothesis was that human error had been a factor in the accident, likely influenced by Crossfield's prolonged absence from the sport. Number 5. New Year's Eve Incident in Copenhagen In early January of 2018, a Danish man was placed in a medically induced coma following an accident involving a champagne bottle in Copenhagen. During New Year's celebrations, the unnamed man was trying to open the bottle while reportedly holding it between his legs. Moments later, it exploded and launched a shard, which severed an artery in his leg causing major blood loss. He was taken to Copenhagen Riggs Hospitalet, one of the country's largest medical facilities where he remained in critical condition as of the latest updates. His case was regarded as a freak occurrence since most of the reported champagne bottle injuries typically involve stray corks and not the bottle exploding. Number 4. Luis Samuel Rios Rodriguez and Abed Jonathan Midens Lopez Luis Samuel Rios Rodriguez and Abed Jonathan Midens Lopez were at the Barriles Restaurant and Sports Bar on New Hampshire Avenue in Tacoma Park, Maryland on the afternoon of December the 18th of 2022. The fun atmosphere that was reported inside the establishment took a turn when Rodriguez and Medens Lopez got into a verbal argument with another patron. They were separated by a security guard and the aforementioned duo was escorted outside. Rodriguez then returned to the restaurant with a firearm and confronted the patron. A physical altercation ensued that culminated with Rodriguez shooting the latter. Local law enforcement responded to reports of shots fired and located the victim, who was transported to a hospital in critical condition. Rodriguez and Medens Lopez were taken into custody while trying to flee the restaurant. Medens Lopez had suffered non-fatal injuries and he was taken to a hospital before he was processed by law enforcement. His booking photo would show a stitched up wound on his forehead. Rodriguez faced charges of attempted first-degree murder, first-degree assault, use of a firearm in the commission of a felony, and second-degree assault. Medens Lopez was charged with conspiracy for the same charges. Number 3. Callum Miller and Paige Rice On October the 17th of 2021, Englishwoman Paige Rice was in the passenger seat of an Audi S3 driven by her ex-boyfriend, Callum Miller, and heading towards the Queensway Tunnel in Liverpool. As reported by her mother, Claire, 22-year-old Paige had been planning a night out in the city for her birthday. Claire would later tell the media that her daughter had been talking about entering her last year of partying as she had plans of saving up to buy a house. Paige, 
a nail technician and aspiring influencer, and Callum had reportedly broken up a few months prior, but they were believed to have remained friends. Paige had visited Callum and they went out together on October the 17th. As he approached the tunnel, 27-year-old Callum was driving at 98 miles per hour on a 30 mile per hour road. He struck two vehicles, collided with bollards and then lost control of the Audi. Moments later, he collided headfirst with a Mercedes taxi, traveling at around 25 miles per hour. The initial and final collisions were captured by CCTV, while the Audi traveling at high speed was also recorded by the taxi's dashcam. Both vehicles suffered extensive damage and the force of the collision sent the taxi back a considerable distance. Its driver was taken to the trauma unit at Aintree Hospital where he underwent extensive surgery for severe damage to his wrist, hip, and right leg. Paige died within hours of the collision with trauma as the recorded cause of her passing. The police initially treated the incident as a criminal probe and believed that Callum could have been investigated for causing death by dangerous driving. Law enforcement ultimately decided not to launch the investigation given the condition of those involved in the crash. Callum died from a traumatic brain injury a few days after Paige. Number 2. Incident at Grona Lund Park A 35-year-old woman was killed and nine other people were injured in June of 2023 following a roller coaster accident at Grona Lund Park in Stockholm, Sweden. According to witness reports, the front of a train from the steel-tracked Jetline roller coaster flew off the track and stopped at a height between 20 and 25 feet. One of the cars, which carried 14 people, tilted towards the ground and several of its occupants fell out along with the car's wheel assembly. Of them, a 35-year-old woman suffered fatal injuries. Another rider had managed to cling to the track and was pictured sitting on a beam under the train. The park was evacuated in the incident's aftermath and would remain closed for at least a week to allow the authorities to assess the situation. Local police initiated a criminal investigation on possible charges of involuntary manslaughter, causing bodily harm and causing danger to others. If you want to watch our earlier release on when being reckless goes wrong right after number one, then all you have to do is stay put. It's coming right up. Number one, Alessandra Tynum. At the time of the New Year celebrations in 2022, Brazilian woman Alessandra Tynum and her family were visiting Praia Grande in Sao Paulo. On New Year's Eve, Tynum's family was at the home they'd rented out while the 38-year-old and her two children and her cousin Alexander Goncalves went to the beach to watch the fireworks display that the city had organized. At the beach, Goncalves began recording the show with Tynum's cell phone. He captured a man enthusiastically gesturing to the camera while countless fireworks lit the sky behind him. Simultaneously in the background, another man lit up a pyrotechnic rocket in the sand. The footage would show the rocket becoming airborne but then sharply deviating from its vertical path and shooting straight to the spot from where Tynum and her family were watching the display. It struck Tynum in the chest, exploding into a fireball on impact. Goncalves rushed to help his cousin, who'd started screaming in agony. The 41-year-old later told a media outlet, at that moment I looked at her and saw the artifact trapped. The firework had gotten caught in Tynum's clothes and Goncalves sustained burns trying to remove it. Tynum died as a result of the injury she'd sustained in the explosion. Prior Grande police treated the incident as a homicide and culpable bodily injury. They were able to obtain an image of the suspect's face and launched a search for him. They also aimed to find out who had sold the man the firework as it was prohibited in the city. On August the 11th of 2020, a pedestrian was fatally struck by a speeding car while crossing the street in San Francisco, California. The incident reportedly occurred at the intersection of Geary Boulevard and Gough Street in the city's Japantown neighborhood. 50-year-old Mark Berman, a father of two, was the individual legally walking in a crosswalk when a passing car ran a red light and hit him. The driver responsible was identified as 26-year-old Rajar Whitfield, who was arrested and charged with manslaughter, reckless driving, speeding, and entering a crosswalk on a red signal. He was booked at the San Francisco County Jail with his bond set at a reported $300,000.
during a board meeting held by the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency in the accident's aftermath. It was determined that Whitfield had been traveling at speeds of up to 65 miles per hour and recording the reckless behavior for social media in the moments leading up to his collision with Berman. The stretch of road where the crash occurred had a posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour. Following Whitfield's arrest, alarming social media videos emerged in which he brazenly discussed driving 100 miles per hour in 25 miles per hour zones, joked about incriminating himself and labeled himself a street racer. Number 6. DeAndre Avery Florida man DeAndre Avery returned home from a doctor's appointment on August 11th of 2021 to find his girlfriend in critical condition with a gunshot wound to her head. The 22-year-old frantically dialed 911 before turning his attention to the unconscious woman. When emergency crews arrived, they found Avery performing CPR on 21-year-old Shamea Lim, who was subsequently pronounced dead. Investigators determined that the fatal round had been discharged from Avery's personal Glock 43 handgun, one of four firearms he kept in the house. The young man told officers that he normally hid the weapon next to his bed in a backpack, decorated with characters from the animated children's series Paw Patrol. As deduced by the ensuing homicide investigation, Avery and Lynn's two-year-old son had gotten his hands on the gun after rummaging through the backpack. The young woman was, at the time, on a work-related Zoom call with several of her colleagues. The child inadvertently fired the weapon at her. Upon seeing Lynn slumped over in her chair with blood all over her head and face, her co-workers called 911 shortly before Avery came on the scene and did the same for leaving a loaded weapon within a toddler's reach and for stowing it in a bag which said toddler might reasonably be fine attractive due to its decoration. Avery was taken into police custody on charges of manslaughter by culpable negligence and failure to securely store a firearm. Number 5. Daniel Crawshaw on March the 7th of 2020, Yorkshire man Daniel Crawshaw got behind the wheel of his BMW Coupe following a night out in which he reportedly consumed four pints of lager and multiple vodka lemonades. Witnesses warned him against driving in his obviously intoxicated state, but the 28-year-old disregarded them and went out into the night to meet up with a couple of friends, one of whom was 20-year-old Keegan Edgel. Crawshaw allegedly crashed into another vehicle while parking his car in Huddersfield, but nevertheless continued driving after picking up Edgel, who got into his passenger seat, and an unidentified man who got in the back. As gathered from CCTV from a nearby house, Crawshaw lost control of the BMW as he approached a bend in the road. The vehicle consequently swerved off the roadway, went over a grass verge, and smashed into a wall. Crawshaw then emerged from the disabled car and rolled a cigarette before trying to get into a passing taxi. The cabbie refused to allow the man into his vehicle and dialed 999 to report the crash. When paramedics arrived at the scene, they pronounced Edgel dead. The second passenger was taken to a hospital and placed in a medically induced coma. Although his condition improved by the next day, he reportedly continued to experience symptoms including memory loss for several months after the accident. Crawshaw was arrested in the aftermath. In November of 2022, he admitted causing death by dangerous driving and causing serious injury by dangerous driving. The following month in Leeds Crown Court, Crawshaw was sentenced to eight and a half years behind bars and was also disqualified from driving for 75 months after his release. Number four, LaMarcus Walker. In March of 2019, a group of reckless ATV riders ran rampant throughout the streets of Nashville, Tennessee. A police affidavit identified one of the suspects as LaMarcus Walker, who was taken into custody on a charge of reckless driving in the aftermath. The document further detailed how, on the morning in question, an unnamed victim was stopped at a red light on Dickerson Pike when the rowdy group of riders came hurtling down the northbound lane on a large number of dirt bikes and ATVs driving erratically. The victim reported seeing Walker executing a wheelie on his ATV when he suddenly lost control of the vehicle and it struck a car. Walker himself went flying, but both he and the vehicle were loaded into a black Ford pickup before the arrival of law enforcement. Moments after witnessing Walker's accident, the victim pulled out his cell phone to record the mayhem, at which point a man approached him and placed a metal object, believed to have been a firearm, up to the bystander's head. They made off with the victim's cell phone before police caught up with the pickup a short time later. While Walker and his associates denied any involvement in both the hit-and-run collision and the subsequent armed robbery, 
the victim positively identified them to the officers who placed them under arrest. Another ATB driver named as Walter Moss was arrested for striking a police sergeant during the mass ride through Nashville. He consequently faced a number of charges, including aggravated assault. Number 3. Lisa Guerrino In the early morning hours of June the 1st of 2022, Las Vegas woman Lisa Guerrino blazed through a stop sign near Centennial Parkway and North Shomba Road and slammed directly into an SUV exercising the right of way. 38-year-old Garino subsequently fled the scene on foot. Officers tracked her down to her nearby apartment, and when they spoke with her, she denied any involvement in the crash, which had resulted in the death of 37-year-old Stephen Palmatier Jr. The man's young son also needed to be hospitalized after suffering critical injuries. Garino's husband told the police that she'd been at Jackpot Joni's Casino in the hours before the fatal accident, investigators learned from a bartender at the casino that Garino had been served six shots of patron silver tequila before she got back behind the wheel. She still had an unsteady gait and seemed very confused when interacting with officers at her apartment. In September of 2022, Garino entered a guilty plea to charges of DUI resulted in death, DUI resulted in substantial bodily harm, reckless driving, resulted in substantial bodily harm and leaving the scene of a crash. Her sentencing was originally scheduled to take place in November, but it's unclear as of the latest updates whether her punishment had yet been handed down. Number 2. Sean Speed and Jeffrey Peer Delaware State Troopers were called to the 5000 block of Smyrna Leipzig Road for a report of shots fired in the early hours of September the 1st of 2019. Upon arrival, the officers were told by a local resident that a female motorist had pulled into their driveway, followed by another vehicle with multiple men inside. The parties reportedly began arguing about a prior road rage incident and the homeowner subsequently asked them to vacate the property. Although they initially obliged, the male suspects returned a short time later and fired two shots in the direction of the other car. The suspect vehicle led troopers on a brief pursuit before eventually surrendering to law enforcement. The driver, 24-year-old Sean Speed and a passenger, 43-year-old Jeffrey Peer, were both taken into custody. The former faced a plethora of charges including disregarding a police officer signal, reckless driving, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, and first degree, reckless endangerment. Peer was charged with reckless endangerment and conspiracy and was released after posting his $3,500 bail. Speed, on the other hand, was held in custody at the Sussex Correctional Institution on a $29,850 secured bond. Number 1. The Shooting of Matthew Wilson A shooting on the 3600 block of Buford Highway in Atlanta, Georgia claimed the life of an uninvolved bystander in a neighboring apartment complex on January the 16th of 2022. The victim was identified as Matthew Wilson, a 31-year-old astrophysicist from England who'd been visiting his girlfriend, Catherine Shepard, in Atlanta. The couple reportedly met while Wilson was completing postdoctoral work at Georgia State University, where Shepard was also studying. He'd only been in the States for a few short hours before the deadly incident, which occurred at about 2 a.m. Wilson and Shepard heard several shots ring out, which prompted the latter to look out the window in an attempt to locate the source of the gunfire. When she turned around, Wilson was bleeding and his breathing was noticeably labored. She rushed him to the hospital after realizing that a stray bullet had entered their apartment through the bedroom wall and struck him in the head. The man was ultimately pronounced dead. As of the most readily available updates on the matter, investigators were still working to identify the individual or group responsible for the reckless shooting. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be interviewed by Joe Rogan or be at the center of a Mr. Beast video? Let us know in the comments section below.